Hello friends, welcome to engineering tutorial. So we'll continue our discussion related to optoelectronics devices and systems. So in the previous uh, videos, we discussed about uh, the basic concepts related to semiconductors, atomic structure and the energy band theory. So in this video, we are going to discuss about uh, an important part of uh, semiconductor concept okay which is utilized in the working principle of optoelectronics uh, materials be it uh, the source side from the source point of view optoelectronic source or optoelectronic detector which is the band gap or the forbidden energy gap or the difference in the energy levels between the valence band and conduction band of semiconductors and how we can manipulate that energy gap to uh, fit into the requirement which we have you know particular frequency or wavelength range you know in which region of the electromagnetic spectrum we want to operate depending on that the band gap is altered and that is called as band gap modulation okay so we'll discuss it so we are already aware about uh, you know band gap uh, uh, the forbidden energy gap or energy difference so we know that uh, every uh, orbit it corresponds to a certain energy level okay for an isolated atom whereas for atom which is interacted which is surrounded by many other uh, atoms identical atoms it leads to energy levels okay with the the you know the outermost orbit called as the valence orbit or the valence energy level okay each has a lower and a higher value for this energy range the range of energies so this leads to two important energy bands that are important in case of semiconductors or any other material for semiconductors which is the valence band which is the outermost orbit the energy associated with the outermost orbit the energy of the electrons in the outermost orbit and the conduction band the conduction band refers to the energy possessed by the free electrons the free electrons are those which break free from the outermost orbit by acquiring or absorbing a certain amount of energy from an external source so they escape the valence band and move to the conduction band become uh, become free electrons and they are responsible for conduction of current any kind of electrical phenomena it is because of the conduction band free electrons so this energy gap between valence band and conduction band that is interesting for insulators it is greater than 6 electron volt for conductors both valence band and conduction band is overlapping in nature no energy gap energy difference is there but semiconductors they lie somewhere in between insulators and conductors that's why they're in interesting they have properties of insulators they have properties of conductors too so how we manipulate this energy gap to fit our requirement that is the basic principle so the basic uh, fun uh, operating principle from the optoelectronic point of view is that is that uh, the electron hole pair generation how electron and holes are generated now if you remember we discussed uh, p type and n type semiconductors how free electrons are generated how holes are generated how hole is a hypothetical concept a vacant electronic site so we'll discuss that so what happens is that in general at room temperature the valence band of the semiconductor is filled with electrons okay it is filled with electrons and the conduction band is empty i am talking from a optoelectronics point of view suppose uh, 
it is exposed to light okay this semiconductor material and a photon of a certain amount of energy it is absorbed by this electron okay the electron absorbs a light photon of a certain amount of energy which is more than the energy difference the band gap energy between valence band and conduction band so what happens this electron after absorbing this photon energy it gets excited to the conduction band okay excitation of this electron okay after absorbing this photon from valence band to conduction band so it leads to one free electron in the conduction band but this excited electron it cannot remain in that uh, higher uh, conduction band for an indefinite period of time after a certain fixed period of time it is generally in the order of nanoseconds it drops down to the original state the valence band so here two things are important first when this electron it absorbs the photon it ex gets excited to the conduction band it leaves behind a vacant electron site a vacancy a vacancy is created because it was originally present there it left that space went to the conduction band that created a vacant electron site and that vacant electron site is called as a hole after the uh, you know certain fixed period which is called as the lifetime of the electron time period of the electron in the conduction band it drops down to the valence band occupies the same spot and at that moment it releases the energy it releases the photon which it absorbed previously so excitation happens with the absorption of photon energy and uh, it drops down from a higher level to a lower level with the release of photon energy so this is very important from the point of view of uh, source and detector for detectors you know photo detectors or opto electronic detectors this absorption of photon is important because we want to detect light so light is falling on a device so photons it will get absorbed by electrons and it will move to the conduction band that is, this is detector principle basic working principle there is lot more to it lot more complicated mechanisms are there but this in a simple way i'm trying to make you understand this is detectors functioning of detectors absorption of light photons excitation happens and then there is lot other things that we have to do but for now this is the principle and for source where we want light release of light photons this the dropping down from a higher state to a lower state that is important so this is the basic principle so if we want to express it from the point of view of uh, you know uh, the energy momentum diagrams so in that case we will have this for direct band gap semiconductors where the conduction band minima and the valence band maxima they coincide this transition happens very smoothly so and for that reason this uh, direct band gap semiconductors are used whereas in case of uh, indirect band gap semiconductors where both the conduction band uh, maxima and the valence band Uh, conduction band minima and the valence band maxima they occur at different momentum values this transition is occurs at a different momentum value so it is that's why it is avoided okay indirect band gap semiconductors are avoided so this energy gap is very important so if by any means we can minimize this energy gap then uh, we can uh, you know Uh, achieve this transition from valence band to conduction band smoothly so all is dependent 
on the energy gap the forbidden energy gap the energy difference between the valence band and the conduction band so any means by which we try to alter or manipulate the magnitude of the energy gap or the forbidden energy gap so that uh, optical signal or light signal of a particular wavelength or frequency can be detected or we want a light signal of a particular frequency wavelength so that adjustment of the energy gap is called as band gap modulation because the frequency wavelength of operation is dependent on this energy gap okay so simple definition of band gap modulation is the manipulation or adjustment of the forbidden energy gap between valence band and conduction band is called as band gap modulation there are different ways in which we can do it uh, first is compound semiconductors or alloy semiconductors are used okay then uh, quantum nanotechnology that is another use then uh, adjustment of temperature and pressure then extrinsic semiconductors used that is doping process that is used to modulate band gap energy so we'll be discussing each of these in separate videos in this video we'll be discussing uh, compound semiconductors or alloy semiconductors how they change the band gap energy so for now you understand manipulating the energy gap to change the value the magnitude of the energy gap is very important in deciding the region frequency wavelength range of operation of the optoelectronic communication so alloy semiconductors so we know that this, uh, this uh, semiconductors on the basis of composition can be divided into two categories simple compound simple com semiconductors it consists of only one element single element they are called as simple semiconductors whereas uh, compound semiconductors they consist of more than one elements this compound semiconductors they can be used to you know uh, adjust the band gap of uh, forbidden energy gap of semiconductors different combinations of different elements from the column 3 5 2 6 they can be of the periodic table they can be used different combinations give us different values of band gap energy okay so there are different categories okay out of them the 3 5 compound semiconductors of the periodic table that give us binary uh, alloy semiconductors that is gallium arsenide gallium phosphide indium phosphide indium antimony then like that then uh, tertiary semiconductors which is the you know the atomicity or the you know how how many element of each uh, is used that is given by an empirical relationship so where this uh, x or y or z like that different uh, atomicity values that decide how much is the contribution of each element for example here in this alx ga1 minus x as here the value of x can be either 0 or 1 when x is 0 it is only gallium arsenide okay please focus here this one i'm talking about just i'm trying to make you understand here it is alx ga1 minus x as here the value of x can either be 0 or 1 when x is 0 this will be 0 so it will be ga1 means only ga it is gallium arsenide when x is 1 it is al ga1 minus 1 is 0 and is aluminum arsenide like that okay so like that different combinations with different atomicity they are used that give us tertiary and quaternary alloy semiconductors so here the 
significant property or advantage of these compound alloy semiconductors is that for different categories or different combinations of these alloy semiconductors the band gap energy is different okay the band gap energy is different and the frequency or wavelength okay the frequency and wavelength or of operation is different so we want to uh, have optoelectronic detectors or sources uh, operating in different regions okay different frequency ranges different wavelength ranges so that is dependent on the band gap energy different combinations of compound semiconductors give us different band gap values and different frequency and wavelength ranges as you can see from this table different alloy semiconductors they have different energy gap levels which is again dependent on the contribution of each element the value of x okay the atomicity the contribution of each element in the alloy semiconductors for example here for this alloy semiconductor alx in 1 minus xp aluminum indium and phosphorus the energy gap value is this much 1.351 plus 2.23x here aluminum gallium and arsenic here it is 1.425 plus 1.247x plus 1.147 into x minus 0.45 whole square Sim similarly here aluminum indium and arsenic with this kind of a combination it has this value of energy gap so again this is the reason why alloy semiconductors are used to get us different value of energy gap or forbidden energy gap values and how this energy gap affects the frequency or wavelength that is this okay see different energy forbidden energy ranges values they give us different wavelength ranges which falls in different categories in the electromagnetic spectrum for example ultraviolet with the forbidden energy gap values for in terms of electron volt from 3.18 to this much it gives us this wavelength range in micrometers for violent violet it is 2.76 to 3.10 electron volt this range it gives us the wavelength operating range from 0.39 to 0.45 for blue 2.48 to 2.76 wavelength range 0.45 to 0.5 micrometer green 2.18 to 2.48 electron volt and wavelength from 0.5 to 0.57 so like that different forbidden energy gap values give us different wavelength or frequency ranges of operation so that is why it is very important to take into consideration this forbidden energy gap the band gap energy between the valence band and the conduction band because everything else depends on that the frequency range or wavelength range of operation everything so if we can manipulate this energy gap then we can adjust the frequency or wavelength range of operation in which uh, region of the electromagnetic spectrum we want to uh, operate so that is dependent on the band gap energy and band gap energy is dependent on the composition or combination of elements that are used in the compound semiconductor okay so this is uh, the basic concept related to band gap modulation and alloy semiconductors for uh, manipulating energy gap values so i hope you like this video and please subscribe my channel engineering tutorial for more such videos related to engineering science and technology have a great day thank you very much